Thanks, Raina. And thank you, Raina. And thank you, Michaels, for having myself and Pepperell Braiding Company um, here to do a fun stackable bracelet project. Uh, I think if you hang out with me on my Facebook lives and Instagram, you know, I have a little bracelet addiction. And so this is a perfect partnership with Pet for All Braiding because they make the best stretch material ever. I started using this in college and um, it's tried and true. That was just a few years ago. <laughs> It's not true. My friend Anna from Pepperell Braiding Company is on too. So if you have questions about materials, um, as far as stretch elastic, diameters, knotting, um, she's amazing on customer service and we'll get you what you need. So feel free to add them to the chat. And um, Anna, when you have questions, like interrupt me because mostly this video is about how to string up super duos. What size of a stretch magic do we need? How can we jazz them up and a little bit of inspiration at the end? So I feel bad because in my instructions, I'm just gonna first say for shape, I said 0.5 millimeter stretch magic. And you can use that, but last night I got wild about 10 p.m. and I was like, I'm just gonna try that 0.7 because that is my favorite. Um, 0.7 millimeter is just a touch thicker and I'm gonna explain why I switched over. So if you know where your 0.7 is, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, the 0.5 will work, but I'm gonna explain why I think 0.7 is our friend on this project. So um, I hope this finds everybody well. Let's just get to stringing some beads, shall we? Um, for this project, I'm gonna show you my two simple bracelets and then we'll amp it up a little bit. Um, I just strung up my super duos and I'm using a size eight seed bead. Okay, these are really easy to make. They're great for TV work. You can see I cracked one of my seed beads when I was putting the crimp tube on, on my first one. But I feel like showing my mistakes is how you prevent them. So I'm just gonna you know, show you all the pitfalls so that you have success. Um, at the end of our strung piece, I'm gonna show you how to use crimp covers. If you've never seen crimp covers before, um, these are just little Pac-Man shaped beads that close, they come open and we're gonna close them to hide the knot. If you don't have any, it's okay, but it gives you a really slick look. You can see on my um, bracelets, all my bracelets are ended with that crimp cover. And it just, it gives just a really nice finished look for your jewelry designs. So, okay, let's go. So we're gonna grab some size eight seed beads in your favorite color. These are what the super duos look like. They're a two hold check glass bead. Um, I know I've got a little glare. I clearly have a little problem. Once you get one, you're gonna want like all the colors, but these are a two hole bead. Um, they kind of look like you'll never see them differently, but they kind of remind me of a pig snout shape. Is that crude? Sorry, but that's, it's a two hole bead. Um, so, so, um, that's what we need to get started. And then, like I said, you can use 0.5, but I'm going to be using the 0.7 millimeter stretch magic, and then we'll finish it up with some crimp covers. So I'm going to set my tray aside. I've got three bracelets laid out here that I'm going to just keep showing you the knots. I'm going to show you the knots, show you the knots and show you the knots. So I hope that works for everybody. If you have embellishments or sliders, grab them if you want. I just wanted to show you some further inspiration. Um, how you can do that and the mechanics of that. So, all right, here we go, guys. I kind of hid myself over in the corner um, so that I could just pull in my bead mat here. All right, don't look at these yet. That's a further inspiration project. Okay, so on point seven, the cool thing about stretch magic is you don't need a lot of tools to use it, right? So grab some snips and you're gonna cut yourself off I don't know. I'm kind of wasteful, I guess, but maybe 24 inches. You could probably get away with maybe 20 inches because you're just stringing the length that you want for your bracelet times two though. That cord is gonna run through one way and then it's come, coming back the other way. So you need double the length that you want your project. So I always think like, couple feet should do it. That's why I buy the big 25, or is this 25 meters, Anna? 100 meters full. 
This is the getter meter school. Everybody was talking meters. about the giant school. That's a hundred meters right there. Hundred meters. I'm here. I'm not here for you know my health. I got the hundred meter. I'm in it to win it. And then the secret to stretch magic is you do want to give it a pre-stretch. And this is why I don't know why I had, it was a head smacking moment of that when you give stretch magic that pre-stretch. I'm trying to show you in my little camera here. Um, that thins out your elastic about that much. So when you do that to 0.5, you're thinning out that elastic just, just a touch. So I'm going all the way to the end on my pre-stretch. I'm just giving, I mean, I'm working out all of that before I go to knot it. I wanna get rid of all of that uptight elastic, you know, vibe I'm pre-stretching. And I'm going all the way to the end. Now, because I don't think I got the very tip of the elastic where I'm going to be putting it through the bead, I'm going to snip off the very end of the elastic. Actually, I'm going to knot one side. I'll just knot it. And then I'm going to, that's my bead stopper for now. And then I'm going to snip the other end. And that way, where I start, and I'm cutting it at an angle, that way where I start should be nice and thinned out and the diameter should go right through your beads. Go ahead and put whatever color size eight beads you want on your bead mat, as well as what Super Duo colors. This is how they look in the jewelry section of the store. They're right there um, in the Michael's jewelry section, hanging with the seed beads, kind of across from the strung beads. And don't overthink your color combos, guys. Just grab some and, you know, just try making a bracelet. I'm gonna lower my camera a little bit so you can really see what we're up to. But you can see how these beads, when they're strung up, they really interlock and play well together. You might even be able to get away with a size 11 CB, but the eight really shows up nice. And when you put it, let me get one that's not tied up so I can just drape it. Um, when you put it on your wrist, it really looks stunning. I think it looks, you know, pretty great if you can see it in my stack, but that's the one, but you can see how it just shows up that stripe of color, really simple. And, you know, stretch is great because it fits a lot of sizes. Okay, so we're gonna find that unknotted side and that's gonna be your working line. And you're going to start with a super duo. This project is not for anybody in a hurry. It takes a minute to get in the rhythm. I don't want to kid you on it. Just get started. It's not. It's a you got to get in the rhythm and find the holes and get in that kind of I call it like playing ski ball where you're just like, OK, I just know where I'm aiming, you know, and I use the end of the elastic. You can pat out some beads here on your mat. You can use the end of your elastic sometimes just to stab the bead right where you want it and pick them up. Um, the jewelry making or creativity in general, I think is like, um, making meatloaf. You got to do you, if you want more salt, put it in, you know? So, um, thank you to my friend, Karen Waters for, um, putting in the, putting in the supply list. It looks like a lot of stuff on my tray, but it's only because I had to have one of everything uh as far as the super duos go <laughs> there's so many different finishes and this is a good looking bracelet for people of all ages we make tila bracelets you know we made tila bracelets at thanksgiving um with all the girls in my family and this is the same idea where you can just bring these but i would say you need a couple task lamps because some of my aunts who are just a couple years older than me were complaining that they couldn't see. So you see how I'm just picking up these beads and you're doing every other one, but you do want to start with a super duo. But if you didn't, it's no big deal. Don't unstring all of that work. Just um, at the end, we'll fix it. Okay. So what you're going to do is keep stringing for the whole length of your bracelet. If you're just tuning in, you haven't missed anything. Um, we're just starting to string. I'm stringing on 0.7 after all, because I like it's just, just a touch uh, thicker than the 0.5. I 
once you pre-stretch it. If you use it right out of the roll, I think you'll see how it's a stiffer fit into, into the elastic stretch magic. And I'm curious, like if you have questions, please feel free to post them to the chat. Um, this is just a fun, easygoing project. Maybe if you need a last second gift for someone, you can try this technique out. Um, maybe if you, you are just kind of feeling low on creativity, you can try this out because it's, there's something very healing about just stringing beads. You know, it's very meditative. You don't need to know, you know, we learn how to string macaroni as kids, right? Like when we used to spray paint macaroni onto yarn and wood beads, and there's something very therapeutic about just alternating colors. And just, you're just gonna string the length of your bracelet. And I was playing around with this. I think this would make a cute ring project as well. I'll just show you. I made these short pieces for um, bracelet and, or earring embellishments. But if you look at this, I think, I can't say it, like on my Facebook lives, I'm like, hit the like sign if you agree. But I do believe you could make some little stretch rings. Don't look at my dry hands, boy. Um, I do believe though, you could make some rings with the same technique. I think once you play around with it, you know, you'll get different ideas. And you can string a large whole bead in the middle. Um, don't, you know, don't limit yourself. If you have ideas, definitely try them because stretch um, material is very forgiving and it kind of just goes where you need it to go. If you've accidentally strung two, um, this is a fun tip. If you've accidentally strung two seed beads in a row and you didn't realize it until eight super duos later, let's say you're like, oh, I'm stringing, I'm happy. And then all of a sudden you're like, put two super, I put two seed beads, eight super duos back. One of the tricks I learned, and this is kind of hard on your stringing material, but you can take your pliers if you're a little destructive, you can take your pliers and you can literally just kind of give it a shallow, like just a little tight crack. This is not going down without a fight, but you can literally crack that seed bead and get it off of your line, okay? Um, instead of having to restring 40 super duos. You know, that's the thing. Hi, Nabila. Did you start with a knot at the end of that to prevent them from sliding off of the back? I did. I just put an overhand like you would tie a balloon. I just put the old good old fashioned knot in. We're going to cut that away anyway. And so that's the story. But this class, like we could make this class as long or as short as you guys are up to. If you just are like cut to the knot, <laughs> we can do that. Show us the knot. We don't want to hear you ramble on about beads being meditative um yeah but uh, the more combos that i play around with seed beads now seed beads come in different ones i'm using a japanese type style the ones at michael's are like a czech style so they're a little bit more organic um either work whatever you have and if you've never you're like what seed beads come in different size you're looking for the one that says eight slash zero on the tube. These are things I'm sure a lot of you know. Um, I just didn't want to leave anybody hanging on like, what's an eight ought? And how do I know when I'm facing that big wall of material? This is that's, the eight ought. That's perfect. That was one of the questions is what size beads? Are you okay, cool. And then, um, Anna, you know, I always jump into making stuff. I can't help okay. myself. <laughs> And then I, and then for the stretch magic, you can buy this 0 0.7 in a 10 meter roll if you just, you know, want to make a few projects. Um, but you're looking right here for the 0.7 um, up here on the, the smaller packaging. It says 0.5 millimeters. I really think you'll love this 0.7 for a lot of different things. Um, we were talking earlier and I said, Anna, I forgot to check out my... Um, all the fun facts about stretch magic, because this is an American made, you know, uh, company and they have been in business out in Pepperell, Massachusetts for many years. Um, they have been a big 
pillar in kids' crafts, and they used stretch magic in the Spider-Man movies for the webs. I just always think that's so cool. I think they needed a couple, a, a little bit more than 100 meters for that project, didn't they, Anna? Yes, that's one of my favorite hot talking points of stretch magic. <laughs> I would just love to have seen that installation. I mean, do we have any video footage of that? Like, cause we don't, I'm so disappointed too. I, I haven't been able to find any. We need to find out which, um, spite, you know, there's like a bunch of Spider-Man movies. We need to find out which one, but this, this project, it's going to take you about a half hour, start to finish, you know, to string all of these beads. Um, when you come to the end of your bracelet, some of you are quicker than others, um, than myself, and uh, are ready to turn. <clears throat> when you determine the length of your bracelet or ring or whatever, you do want to end not with a seed bead, but another super duo. So make sure it looks something like this. And I like to wear these bracelets a little bit closer to my wrist. They're kind of like the other scrunchie or rubber band or whatever. See how I'm ending my project with two super duos and not two seat beats. And that's just because I found out the hard way that when I did my very first one of these, when I went to put that crimp cover on, can you see how I, I broke one of the black beads on the other side of that crimp cover? And it just because my pliers got in the way, it was too much going on. The super duos are a way better finish uh, when you're applying the crimp bead. Crimp beads, you can use them with beading wire. That's why they're called crimp beads. Uh, I'm gonna take a sip of tea. So they have multiple uses. Um, this is how they look at Michael's. If you've never seen them, they're over in the finding section. Um, 100 pieces, uh, they come in different sizes. These are gold and silver together. Um, uh, they're multiple uses. They're just fun for hiding. For us, they're fun for just hiding where you crimp your jewelry, nodding, um, illusion style design. So do we have any other questions, Anna? Um, I don't think so. A lot of it is a questions about the knot tying or people who had jumped on and wanted to know what was required. But you're your fans are always included in these chats. So they're always on the ball, being able to give them, this is what you need for the project. So I haven't really had to say anything. I got uh, good friends, Anna. I'm we, did have one, we do have a couple of people asking what size of crimp cover you're using. Oh, I see it. Hey, Wanda. Wanda's asking what size of crimp cover. I'm using whatever Michael's had, Wanda Woman. Um, what is this? I'm gonna guess, Wanda, this is probably a five or six millimeter. I'm gonna say five, maybe six. I never know if they measure it open or closed, you know, but it doesn't say on the packaging whether it's five or six. It's an all purpose print cover. And then, yeah, that's one I already opened. So don't cut two pieces of stretch elastic. What's going to happen is you're just simply going to do a U-turn when you go down the other side, OK? So that's the story. We're just going to do a U-turn. And you can, if you have a ruler, you can literally take a measurement of how, you know, how uh, long you want your bracelet. Like I said, for these kinds of bracelets, it's the same idea. I wear them really close to my wrist. That's not for everybody, but they look kind of weird at the point if you make them like a bangle size. They look, I think, a little bit slicker uh, hugging the wrist. Not so tight that you have marks left on your wrist, but a little bit tighter than like a like a chain bracelet or something or you know kind of more cuff fit some people have asked about you know how you were showing me the slides earlier about yeah. adding um some of the other um sort of focal beads as opposed yeah. to the duos and the seed beads so to add your slides or whatever i just made it work um these do have a little bit more um when you first put them on you're going to put them on at this point in your bracelet. 
And they're kind of annoying because they do slide around. Like if you look at this one, this thing is sliding back and forth. You see that? And it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. But basically all I'm doing is just not wasting my too many super duos hiding behind the focal. I'm just filling in with some beads um, so that everything is nice and smooth. And then threading it back through on my way back by. But you can see how like on either side of the bigger focal, I put two seed beads in between my um, super duos. So, and I just, I stayed consistent on that. Two seed beads, focal, two seed beads, couple super duos, two seed beads. And I kept my pattern consistent, even though I was kind of like, when I looked at it at first, I thought that, is that even, I don't know. And then I said, you know what? You got other problems, <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> don't, don't overthink it. It's pretty, you know, in the lineup. So just go with it. So that's what I did. But yeah, I just use my seed beads to kind of level up. If that makes sense. Does that sound good? So this one is actually at a point where we can do the U-turn. I think we'll get rid of that one. And it doesn't matter if you have a focal or whatever. Um, but you're going to just literally scoot your bracelet down a little bit so that you have everything is even, you know, on your bracelet. Make sure you count. Sometimes you can pre-count your super duos so you're not constantly checking. Um, and then here's what we're going to do. If we can find the hole. So then you're gonna kind of switch. I don't know if you're right-handed or left-handed, but we gotta get rid of the stop or not. I love making jewelry. I've been making jewelry since sixth grade. So I'm really grateful to everybody that came to hang out with me today. Um, see that second hole? We're literally taking, and we're gonna do a U-turn with that working thread. Okay, and I still have my first knot down here. I was traveling with this bracelet, so I had it knotted on both ends, but that's your first knot. So you've strung up here, and now you're just literally taking your working end of your elastic, and now you're doing a U-turn, and you're going back through that second hole in your super duo. It's really that easy. And now is when you'll see the structure of your bracelet, really, like, it's awesome how it just starts to come together. And I like to just go ahead and kind of get that guy up there you don't have to cinch that and you know tug on it we'll do that at the end okay so leave it kind of just open-ended a little bit and then start stringing the other side of your bracelet and i notice um the hardest part is you know stringing those seed beat remembering to string the seed beads in between but if you just hold your bracelet you know your beads like that you can easily just start to run back and forth. And you can see I've got a lot of slack on the corner of my mat. It's fine. It's all going to come together. The, the biggest thing is just don't, you know, don't, don't skip that seed bead because you're going to have a gap. You know what I mean? So that's the secret. Once you get going, you'll see it just watch this it just starts to slide together. And you can see how your elements really start to work and collaborate and it's awesome. Anybody can make these, um, you know, it's, I've tested many super duos at first. I thought, am I, you know, but I'm just saying it takes a minute to get into the rhythm of, of stringing them. So, but I think I, I love this just slightly thicker elastic because after you pre-stretch stretch it, you lose a little diameter on it. And so I feel like once I pre-stretch the 0.7, I probably have a true, you know, closer 0.6 or something. I haven't fact-checked that with Joel or anything, you know, but I feel yeah, like. I also told people, I think it's good to pre-stretch it too. It does help when you're tying the knot at the end. Sometimes if it's a little stiffer, the knots yeah. will break on you. And this way it'll sort of prevent at least to some extent that breakage. Totally. What you see how I'm kind of like pulling that through and alternating that super duo into position as I'm picking up another bead. Once you get through one half of your bracelet, you're smooth sailing. 
And then stretch magic, it comes in black. So if you're doing like a darker bracelet, you can get black. Um, they have a fun glitter one if you're making jewelry with kids. Um, there's so many different, you know, glow in the dark. It's all in the jewelry section over by kind of like the silk knotting and stringing materials. They have it organized with that stuff. And every so often I'll just string like back through a few um, super duos and then I'll clean up this mess that's happening in the background. And just keep sliding it, you know, through. You wanna kind of check every few beads in case you did forget something, you know? But that's what's happening. I've already got an inch and a quarter done. And then when I come up to that focal, I'm literally, you've got to string the same number of seed beads on this side or else it'll, it'll want to spin on you. And that's, that's no good. So it's so quiet tonight. Um, I'm on the Eastern time zone and it's art. It's gray and cold, 23 degrees or something. It is cold out. So um, for makers like us, that just gives us one more excuse to just stay inside and make stuff. It makes me happy. I'm looking forward to the weekend. But if you would have told me a year ago, and that's why I'm really grateful to all of you showing up because um, if you would have told me a year ago, you're going to be stringing super duos and um, size eight seed beads on stretch magic, I would have said, girl, no, I'm not. But I really had so much fun trying this new, you know, super duo beads and how they interlock. I've, We're you know, so happy that you are. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I just was like, no, I'm not, you know, but I really love it. I think it's such a nice bandit, you know, that looks slick. I just, anyway, okay, now we're coming up on that focal bead. So you can see I've strung. And that's the other thing about size eights that are awesome. They aren't escaping through the sidebars. So we're literally going to mirror it. I'm going to string one, and then I've got to count this out two, four, six, seven. So I'm going to go ahead and count out my seven so that I don't have to keep checking. And I'll know immediately if I missed, you know. Here we go. And bead mats are awesome too um, because you can just pick up the beads right off of the mat. Most of the time they end, you know, the, with the whole side up. Now you do wanna make sure this thing isn't twisting. So make sure it's not trying to, you know, your strand's not trying to cross up or down or whatever and, and mess up your row of seed beads. Uh, let's see what have I got here. That doesn't look like seven. Is it, am I going for seven? Two? Did I just take one? Four? Six? Seven? I did. No wait. Five? Yeah, I need one more. I <laughs> I think I took one from my extra bead. Oh my. So we've got another class coming up. I believe it's in January, but I don't know. Um. We got to get the details on that. So keep watching for the pep roll classes. It's, it's been fun getting to work with um, you guys. One more. What can I? Oh, it's up there on the line. There it goes. All right. So can you see how this is sitting? You know, I just, and this is what I did to start. I just kind of strung the beads and I tried fitting eight in there, but it made the elastic bow upward you don't want that you want it you'd rather have a little bit of space in your elastic versus having it bow because then it's not going to sit right on your wrist so go ahead and run your other you know your these are just simply um i think railroad tracks is a good uh analogy hey donna thanks for coming donna you just need some 0.7 millimeter stretch elastic Give it a pre-stretch and we're just stringing one half where we start with a super dough and a size eight seed bead. String that for the length of your bracelet, then do a U-turn and come back down the other side. Super easy. What's the best way you find to figure out what size you want for your particular wrist? You know, I was thinking about that because it is awkward trying to hold that thing on your wrist and double check and take into account the crimp cover, but I still do it. I'm not saying it's easy, but I literally still go like this 
you know, to see like, yeah, that's going to hit it. But you could also do a tailor's tape. Or when I was in college in metal smithing, we would cut a thin piece of paper and we would wrap the paper or cardstock around our wrist and we would mark it with how long we wanted it to meet end to end. And the only problem with the paper method is beads have um, like diameter. So sometimes that bead takes up a little bit of diameter. So you might have to give yourself, you know, a quarter of an inch or something. But I still think the easiest thing is to, you know, make a couple and um, tie the, you know, make a couple that are e equal in size and then tie one. And if you're like, oh, I made it too tight, then you know to add a little bit for your second one and mark it on a piece of paper, your art journal, whatever you got going on, because you need a little spot to keep. I mean, not that you're not making these for gifts, but <laughs> I can, I kind of operate from a two for me, one maybe for someone else. So <laughs> is that selfish? Am I out of here? Gifts for everybody. You know, you could just be making a bracelet for yourself. I just want, I will take one in every color and then we'll worry about everybody else. Save yourselves. Uh, no, it is the season for making extra treats. And this is a great budget friendly project. You know, you can make a bunch of bracelets with these. It's a little wobbly getting out of the chute from the focal bead, but once you get it going, you're golden. And so now, this is where I do think pre-counting your super duos is awesome because you just, you aren't feeling, you're feeling, you're seeing the end in sight. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You feel like we're playing Monopoly? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hide the rest of them from yourself. And then you know where, how, when you stop, you know? <clears throat> all right let's rock and roll uh we're almost there so try to really hold those super duos up in your finger though so the hole is facing up it makes stringing these you get the rhythm you make stringing them a lot faster and you can use the end of your stringing material like a needle we did have somebody ask if you can use a needle with it i i have used a beading needle with stretch magic i find it a little clunky i don't know your opinions on that I like beading needles for big holes, like larger hole beads, but these super duos, you'd be pulling your hair out with that beading needle. I tried it because I wanted it just to glide on with the 0.5. I wanted so badly to just um, use a beading needle and it just, it was cumbersome. It was not, it was no good. So agreed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It just, it just didn't want to go through. I felt like I was going to break my beads or the, the cord. It was abrasive on the cord. I wanted it to work though, really bad, but it just didn't. And that's where it takes creativity, like takes guts to do creativity because when those, when you can't use the needle, it's like, well, frustrating, you know? So luckily, I mean, you, the cool thing about using stretch material too, as it stays sharp. It's not like a thread that frays. Like I haven't, you know, cut open, you know, I don't have to keep trimming the end back. It just stays nice and round. So that's pretty cool. And you might see a little twirl to your bracelet. I don't know why it's doing that. It just kind of does. But if you kind of take your fingers along the edge and kind of smooth it out, you'll lose some of that twirl. We're almost to the end and now we'll get into tying knots. Thanks everybody for hanging out and, you know, letting me finish up my bracelet. Um, did you hear that? My bracelet. I love these vocals. All right. I do Facebook lives every day on my Candy Cooper page and we use stretch magic and um, all kinds of stuff to string with. Um, if you're ever looking for jewelry making ideas or tutorials or whatever, um, this week's been a little busy. We've just had, you know, some people out with uh, sickness and everything else. So it's been a little nuts, but looking forward to the first of the year when things calm down and we get back into daily projects. 
at 1030 Eastern. We have a lot of our friends from Facebook on here today. So I'm grateful. Make sure you're hashtagging your projects if you make anything um, with Pepper O'Brading Stretch Magic. Tell us what you're doing. Um, tag me, Candy Cooper. I want to see what you guys are up to. And that completes the round. Now, if you finish that and it looks a little short, um, you can cut open that end and you could have four tails. But for me, I would rather have an off-centered crimp than have to have four tails, but it would work to have four tails. You could just square knot it, but I'm gonna leave it alone. And just double check to make sure that this is, it just looks weird because these bracelets are so much shorter than chain bracelets or strong bracelets, you know, on beading wear. So I'm gonna have a sip of tea. I'm gonna clear up my bead mat and get some crimp tubes. And I'm gonna show you, I've got one, two, I cannot, three bracelets. I was gonna show you how to do the knot three times and show you how to add the crimp cover. Sound good? That's the All best right. part. Say that again, Anna. That's the best part. That's what we've been waiting for, right? Yeah, I'm telling you what. I know this is like the may take, man. It's like, are we there yet? Okay, so I'm scooting this down a little bit. And you're gonna find your folded end, okay? And I, I'm actually gonna lower the camera a little bit more. That looks good. Okay, cool. And you're gonna have your two, um, I don't want too much of the tail showing. So I'm gonna shorten, it looks like I overcut about eight inches. But you're gonna take the end of your bracelet Make sure it's not all um, twisted. You know, you want it to kind of have a little bit of order before you start knotting it. And you're gonna thread the two tails through that loop. So if you can see that loop, we're gonna put the, these two tails through the loop on the folded end. And remember, you wanna make sure you have two super duos, like one super duo here, one here next to your knot, okay? And this takes a little finagling. I'm gonna just make sure everything's not twisted and I'm bringing it up and threading it through the loop. And you wanna make sure it's not like, don't have this guy all, see how this guy wants to twist and do whatever. You wanna try to keep it um, how you want it to wear on your wrist, you know? Looks like I already missed so I'm gonna, It's easier sometimes to lay it down and do it to get it started. So I got my two tails through the loop. And I'm gonna pull it, slide all the beads towards that folded loop so it's snug. So can you see what I'm doing here? I don't have too much of a, I don't have, mm, hang on. I don't have too much, like I don't have a large folded loop sticking up. It's pretty, pretty snug against the bead. Not like pulled tight, but it's sitting on top, not stretched, just sitting on top. And so to get that like that, I'm scooting all of my beads towards that folded end in short sections. I'm just grabbing a pinch of beads and scooting them towards the folded end. And that's going to snug everything up. And then you're going to pull your tails through like that. Okay, so not a lot of space, not a lot of gaps. And we'll do this two more times. Okay, we got it like a lark's head almost. Okay. And this is now is a good time to check the fit of your bracelet. Like, do you like the fit of it? If you don't, now's when you can squeeze on a few more beads, you know, if you don't mind that crimp cover being. Um, not centered. Okay, now we're going to take the tails and make sure everything's straight. The bracelet looks good. You're going to take those two tails and you're going to split them. 
and pull them in two different directions. Okay, so I got my tails are coming up, but now they're, they're going in opposite directions. And try to go slow and steady. And I hope I'm not boring anybody, but I want to go slow and steady so you can have some success here. Okay, now we're going to literally take the two tails and we're going to pass them through the center of the bracelet like this. They're going to come down and go through the center of the bracelet in opposite directions. They're going to just, I'm going to split them and they're going to go through. And this is probably the hardest part because it's like, oh, I'm losing control. It's okay, it'll come back together. But I just crossed them and now I'm gonna cinch up my bracelet again. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. So your tails are coming up through that, lar that loop. We're gonna split the tails like that. And now the right tail is gonna go um, this way. And then the left tail is gonna head through the center of the bracelet to the right side. This is really where you need a third hand. Okay. How you doing? Very good. And then now this is where we're just gonna take the bracelet cords, the two ends, and we're gonna put the right tail over the front of the left tail. And we're gonna do a square knot. So that, that right tail's going across the front of the left and come in from the, you know, through the loop. And we're gonna pull it. Give it a little tug, okay? And I don't really yank on this thing, I guess. I don't know why, but I don't like to really like yank it so hard. And then the left tail is gonna cross in front of the right And it goes to the, I, I don't know how you do yours, but I put the cord going at the back of the loop coming through to the front, okay? Just a square knot. And if you get lost, I think the packaging, mine's not in the cardboard packaging anymore of the Stretch Magic, but there are instructions for how to tie on the cardboard. And then go ahead and give it another tug. And then I also like to kind of open up the bracelet a little bit Make sure nothing's slipping and sliding. Um, you can use some uh, E6000 if it makes you feel more, you know, secure, safe and sound. Um, go for it. Put a little E6000, set it aside, let it cure, and then start working on your other one. But now, <clears throat> now we're going to just keep those tails separate. You can see I just, like, I can't help myself. Just keep giving that a little tug. Choose what color of focal um, crib cover you want. I'm gonna, since this says silver, I could go either direction, silver, or I could use the brass because I have these brass tone beads. It's up to you. And these are nice because they're big, so you can see them. Um, the hardest thing about crimp covers is sometimes they get interlocked like that, but you can use your pliers or something to yank them apart. Do you think that over time that crimp cover will start to cut into the stretch magic? You know what? I, if you use the right size, I don't because I've had these bracelets on for two years, this black and this bone colored one. And that is on, you can see that is on, hang on, stretch. And I now am I tugging them on and off and doing, you know, calisthenics with them on? No, but I mean, that thing's been on there for a good push in three years. I've never taken it off and it's, I mean, it's on there. So no, but I suppose if you take them on and off every day, all day, you know, eventually you might see some, you know, right. Maybe chopping it, but stretch magic. Um, and also I guess if you're using like a really skinny diameter with a really tight crimp cover, I'll show you what to watch for. Um, but I go ahead and split my tails like so. And if you have crimping pliers, you can use those. Um, if you don't, you can just use chain nose pliers, but you're just gonna kind of open the bracelet with your fingers, whatever hand you, you, know, you got, and then you're gonna grab that 
crimp cover. See how that Pac-Man shape? And we're just gonna set that right over the knot. Make sure everything looks good and you're right centered over your knot. Can you see? And I'm just gonna literally close it. And I'm kind of pushing my, um, do you see how I'm angling my bracelet to the back so that I don't wanna chomp over the knot. I just wanna get on either side so that I have my knot on there. I think I got it. It's hard to do when I'm looking at the camera. I think I might have missed on that one actually. Oh, Anna, I missed a little bit. That's hard doing that with the camera. But sometimes is it, can... is it possible to use a large size bead as well if you don't feel comfortable using yeah. the uh, crimping? You could finish it with a large size bead and pull it um, off to the side as you knot it, you know, and then glue it over your large size need bead. You could put some E6000 right over top. Totally. If you have a large hole bead, that be honest. Good. You're doing a much better job than I'm good at crimping, so that's okay. Uh, I'm trying hard over here. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, I don't trim the ends until I put the bracelet on and give it a couple more stretches, you know. But you can see how if you don't over crimp, your cords are coming right outside the hole of the crimp cover. And you got a secure slick finish to your bracelet. Go ahead and trim your ends. In theory, I would use my wire cutters, but I didn't want anybody to feel like you got to go buy more tools. You got to get tools to do this project. Just scissors will get it done. You know, nail clippers, something that you can get close to. And then like, I'll probably get a little bit closer to that. Let's do it again. You want to? But that's the that's the idea is just these cute little stretch bracelets. Now that one's got a chunkier top to it. So it kind of rotates, but they're just cute bracelets. I just love them. And they look good all stacked up too. You know, when you use the, what's kind of fun to see is this is the same super duo with black beads on the right and cobalt beads on the left, you know? I mean, it's the same bead, just two different, completely different looks. And this is a turquoise matte super duo with black beads, but they're cute. You can put that guy in the middle and they all kind of tie in, you know, kind of edgy. Um, okay, let's do it again. This is a pretty one that I did chocolate beads with, with the, same, I guess I was hooked on this bead color I'm using, if you're wondering, is called, I think it's something purple violet or something, bronze. I guess it's bronze, but it's got flashes of purples and pinks and oranges. Okay, so we're gonna take the two ends. Remember, we're ending with two super duos and you're gonna tug out that folded end a little bit. Thanks. Pepperell Braiding Company is um, the people are the people that make stretch magic. So they've been, they're an American company. They've been around forever. They make paracord. Um, we're gonna, and a lot of macrame supplies. We're gonna just take the two ends of our bracelet and we're gonna put them through. This one's nice because we don't have a focal to worry about. We're gonna put the two tails of cord through the folded end of the bracelet and cinch it up. And to cinch it up, you're gonna just simply slide the beads to the folded, I'm sliding them towards the folded end. So that we're gonna see more gaps in the tails, you know? I wanna make sure I'm not twisting it while I slide. Okay, so once you get to the end, you you'll probably have a little bit of space that you need to get rid of. And ideally you want your two tails of um, stretch magic to run parallel to each other like railroad tracks. Just like that. Okay, so you have a nice ribbon effect. Joan Dice, how are you? Aw, thanks Wendy. Um, Okay, once you get your bracelet pretty cinched up and I'm just, I'm not pushing so hard you guys that I'm stretching my material. I don't want my bracelet to have a bunch of pressure on it. I'm just pushing it up 
to where they're just sitting. I'm, I might be sharing too much, but I just, I feel like if you've never made a stretch bracelet before, that's handy to know. Um, okay, and then we're gonna take our two tails. This is too much. So I'm gonna trim that down a little bit. Boy, about put that in my teeth. Uh, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> take my two tails and they're gonna split off. So they're going one tail, right side tails going to the right, left side tails going to the left. And you're gonna put the cord, uh, left tail is gonna go through the center of the bracelet while the right tail is gonna go in the opposite direction through the center of the bracelet. See, I'm just putting that right tail's going right through the bracelet towards the left, the left's coming over to the right. And you're just gonna cinch up your, your ends. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Okay, here you go. So now once they cross in the, through the center of the bracelet, you're gonna bring up your tails on the right and left side. And right tail is gonna cross over the left side of the um, elastic. So I'm just, I'm gonna place, I'm gonna take the right tail and put it in front of the left tail of elastic like that. And I'm gonna scoot it through the loop and I'll pull the ends. Give it a little tug, gentle tug. We don't need to go crazy at this point, okay? And you can see I'm opening and I just don't want my bracelet to kink up. You know, you want it to just stay nice and relaxed. We're not trying to stretch it out. Okay. And then we're gonna take the left tail and cross it in front of the right now, okay? And we're gonna stick it right on around and bring it through the loop. And that's our square knot. And I'm always tugging. And look how I'm holding the tails and kind of opening the bracelet at the same time. Um, that's just stuff that I've just, you know, developed over time. It's nothing that you have to do. It's just what I do to make sure that if I'm pulling on this and I'm not holding on to this, you know what, how that's gonna end up if I didn't get a good knot, it's gonna explode all over the table. Um, so I just pull and hold the tails at the same time so that it, if the knot does slide, I can see it sliding. And I've got some insurance by holding onto that. So that's why I do that. And then now we're just gonna grab another, I'm gonna just use a gold crimp cover. And if they come interlocked like this, you can sometimes prime them apart with your fingers or sometimes you have to get tools involved. And it's usually just because in shipping or whatever they've gotten connected. And then we're just gonna take this little Pac-Man crimp cover right over the knot. So just like that. And before I forget, like I was just looking at this earring. <clears throat> Sometimes crimp covers or hoops, like you can use them over hoops for design elements. That's a fun little trick. Um, I've done projects like that. Okay, and now I'm just holding my two tails in opposite directions. I'm gonna try this time to get it over the knot. And I'm gonna check, like I gotta lean over and see what I'm doing. I was sitting too far back out of the camera way, but I'm gonna try to get it centered over the knot. like that. And then I'm gonna use my pliers and you can also use the open eye section of your crimping pliers. Sometimes that's a nice round, you know, it matches the roundness of the crimp cover. But if you don't have those, no worries, just grab your chain those pliers and I'm gonna pull my bracelet to the back so that the knot's in the back. And I'm just gonna cover that guy. And I'm kind of angling, you know, so that you can see what's happening here. It looks like a little shop of horrors plant. <laughs> I'm such a visual person, but anyway, give that a tug. And if the seam is being stubborn, put your pliers right over the top of the seam. That plier is, or that seam is at 12 o'clock. 
inside my pliers and I'm just, I'm like barely squishing it, you guys, like so barely, like just, just a touch of pressure. And sometimes that'll be just what you need to tighten up your seam. And then give it one more stretch. You can even like put it on. It's tangled on my rings. Yeah, that's it. Put it on, trim your ends. Um, make sure, I don't think I cinched mine up as good as I could have, but then go ahead and trim your extra cords. And you can always put some E6000 on. Don't use super glue. Don't use super glue um, before you uh, add your crimp cover because super glue can frost glass beads. It can ruin the surface of your beads, okay? But that's just a fun little step. Um, another idea I wanna show you is making some little tassels for earrings. This is a little idea where I just strung up a short section. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, super duos and I brought the two ends it literally my cord goes up through a super duo down through the other side and um, I finished it off with a crimp cover I think I used a tinier size for this one hold on oh brother I probably just threw those in my bead table mess but I found these little leather earrings at Michael's and there it is, this is a tinier crimp cover. But I thought these little leather earrings, I thought they were so pretty. And um, so I grabbed those and I thought, I'm just gonna whip up a little tassel. And then I used my crimp cover to hide the knot. So now I can cut that so that there's not two tails. I just wanted to show you how I finished it. But now I've got this cute little element. Now. My bohemian self wanted to add about 17 more layers, but now, you know, you can just fringe these a little bit with scissors and use your stretch as kind of, you know, a design. I know it's stretch, but it's easy to just make a knot, you know, with your little pieces here. Little stripe right down the leaf. I love doing stuff like this. I strung four um, seed beads at the top. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, four seed beads. So it goes, or did I four? six, sorry, six. So it goes, um, it goes super duo, then all the way. Then I strung three, ran it through the jump ring, three more back down the other side and finished it with an overhand knot. Um, and then I used some chain for a bigger jump ring, I found these hoops and you can just use your jump ring or chain link to attach your, just another little idea and close that guy up like that. And then put it on your ear wire or your hoop or whatever you want. It's kind of a cute little, you know, little element of an earring, you know to add a dangle. Um, but like I said, there's these come in a bunch of sets. So you could cut these smaller and make like a concentric design or something like that. But this is how it looks beforehand. So you can see my three beads up and around and then down. And then I just made that little tied off end. And for this one, I used a tinier crimp tube. See how tiny this is? That might be too tiny, but I just, I wanted to just see the beads and not the crimp cover. So I'm force that on there like I do. But that takes a little bit more patience to get tiny crimp um, covers over knots. But I like the effect of this. It's just a cute little, you know, just a cute little tassel-y look. I'll hold them up. I'll hold them up at the end so you can see them. But that's a fun kind of quick project to use up a few super duos. But crimp covers are cool because they just hide what you need. But like I said, you can use larger, like glue larger beads over your knots and you'll get that same beautiful finish. The moral of the story is I think like, we're just trying to hide how we made things, you know? We just don't wanna see the knot, right? 
You guys have any questions? Anna, you see any questions? Um, there was a couple of questions about the slides and where you found the slides in Michael's. And I found if them. Anything specific to look for? Uh, I found them in the charm along section. Like they have these little leather bracelets. And so I found them in the charm along. They were on little cardboard, the brown cardboard, um, the little brown cardboard backers, if that makes sense, in the charm bracelet stuff. Yeah. Just cute. Um, they had all different ones, like, you know, ones that maybe a fifth grader might love. You know, my favorite. Um, since it's kind of holiday decorating time, one of my favorite things I've ever seen Stretch Magic use for Anna and everybody is ornament. Um, you know how hard it is to get sometimes the ornaments over the branch of the tree? Oh, yeah. If you put them on Stretch Magic, you just elastic that thing on. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that's a great idea. It's genius. I I use stretch magic every year to tie skeletons to my house at Halloween. So I'd like to see a picture of that. You, you can use that for so many, it can be used for so many different things. It really can be. I love it. Does anybody want to see me tie a knot one more time? Do you guys feel good about it? I know it's five o'clock. I, I, I thought this class was going to be over in like seven minutes. I was like, this project's too simple. But I hope you got some good knowledge, advice, thoughts, inspiration. Any other questions? I don't see any more. There's a lot, a lot of people are, are leaving now, um, but we do. I can say this on your Facebook page. You did tie this knot for us a few weeks ago, or I think yeah. it might have been the beginning of November. And we have it on our Facebook page too, and it's yeah. a little bit slower. So if people want to watch you doing it many times, there's a lot of great videos of Candy tying this knot. And I think it's probably the best way I've seen stretch tied. Thank you. Anna, I'm so honored. So um, I'm gonna hold these earrings up just real quick so you can get an idea of what we're looking at. These are just quick little hoops, but you can see that little jagged, um, not jagged, but this little stripe of color or beads, you get that nice strike that sometimes you can only get with like metal or something. And the bracelet was great, but the earrings have gotten on fire. That's the okay. Good. It's the most popular thing right now. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to do with those last 30 uh, beats, you know, so you got to use them all, you know. Um, you guys, on behalf, I'm going to kick my leg up over the tripod. On behalf of Pepperell Braiding Company and myself, Candy Cooper, I'm always just so excited to meet new people that share um, our love of making fun and trendy jewelry. Uh, I hope you will join Pepperell Braiding and myself on Facebook. Um, you can search us Instagram. We're on there just providing more inspiration. And a very, very, very uh, big thanks to Michaels for having us. Thank you um, to everybody that grabs their stretch magic. Uh, you guys are the best. And on that note, I'm wishing you all a very safe and happy holiday season. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, Michael. Thank you,